Hello, Kurt Jackson here with this week's Your Money Matters. And uh, this week, uh, I apologize for the redness in my eyes. Allergy season's really kicking me in the tail end this year. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna go over an article I found. It's an industry-related article from InsuranceNewsNet.com. If you'd like a copy of it, just email me. My information will be up at the end of the up the end of this uh, 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 installment. And I'll send it to you because I don't. I think you have to have a password and everything to get into it. So, um, but if you like a copy of it, I'm, I'm happy to share it with you. But it's a, uh, uh, it's an article that's called "Just How Much Are Our Retirement Funds Costing Us?" and it's by Cyril Tui, I think T U O H Y. And he talks about how uh, he and his wife um, started to look into trying to find out how much their retirement funds are actually costing them. And he's like, "Why did he suddenly get in the?" Uh, in, an interest in it. Well, the Department of Labor, it's probably something you may or may not have, have heard about, but the Department of Labor is considering making some important changes to how advisors treat retirement assets. And since the passage of uh, entire the ERISA, it, Employee Retirement uh, Income Security Act in 1974, uh, all of a sudden mutual fund statements have come into to play because a majority of people, when they put their money into their 401k, their 403b, their 457 plan, even IRAs, uh, in Roth IRAs, they put them into mutual funds. And that's because we're not, you know, the average person is not an expert investor and they're trusting that these firms, these Wall Street firms are taking care of them. Um, another reason that they, they were, this guy was a little concerned and wanted to do some research was that a favorite uh, number that's bandied about by consumer interest groups is that uh, almost $17 billion a year is being drained out of our retirement accounts through fees. Now you're gonna to have to pay some fees. Nobody's doing anything, any of this for free, but it would make sense to make sure that the fees that you're paying are more realistic or you can minimize them in any way. And that's one of the things that we've tried to do um, as I've done, began my research. You've heard my story before, uh, back in 2003 when I was, my mortgage clients were taking it in the shorts all the time and getting hammered in 2000 or 2002. Started looking for different things, uh, different ways of doing uh, things smart, smarter, more efficiently, safer. And one of the things that I uncovered along the way, which I hadn't anticipated, was the high fees that we pay and how much that actually costs us. I've run some different numbers. You know, they want us to believe that we're paying about 1% in fees. But in reality, uh, a 2011 study by Forbes magazine and Mutual Fund Research Morningstar shows that actual average fees inside of a mutual fund when you take in account in account the disclosed fees and the fees that are allowed to not disclose it's more it's over three percent now just to give you an idea over a 40-year work life a one percent fee reduces the amount of money that you could have built amount amount of wealth you could have built by about 25 up to 25 percent or more three percent is up to 60 percent or more okay so it re so instead of a million dollars you'd have had four hundred thousand with a three percent instead of a with a one percent fee with a with a instead of a million you'd have about seven hundred and fifty thousand neither are great but as i said you're not going to get away from paying fees so you just want to minimize them so whenever we've developed our strategies within my practice um we've taken into account fees and tried to find the best ways to minimize those fees okay so keep that in mind um so all this money, the 17 billion, and I think that number is low, okay? Uh, and I can get into some more details on that here in a little bit. Uh, that's money that goes towards intermediaries, uh, industry giants in the forms of fees and commissions. And what it doesn't show, doesn't talk about, when we talk about these disclosed and undisclosed fees, um, I, I don't know, you can call, I call it leakage. See, when, when a stock is bought, for instance, let's say you had $10,000 and you wanted to go buy a stock. Would that move the market on that stock? Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit, but probably not. So if you're going to uh, you know, buy $10,000 of the stock, that's not going to say, oh, there's a huge demand, so it's pushing the price up, right? It might just very minusculely. But what do mutual funds do? Do they buy $10,000 worth of stock? No. First of all, they go out. If they got, 10, let's say they got $10 million in a stock, they go sell it. So we've got $10 million, but maybe, and these are exaggerated numbers, but it's easy for our math, okay? So by the time, if, if, if they go to market with $10 million worth of a, a stock, that's going to drive the stock price down. So what if maybe they only get $9 million 
in net fee net funds out of it after they've sold that tent because it's dropped the market so much. Then what do they have to do with that nine million dollars? Now they got to go reinvest it, right? So when they go to reinvest it and they put nine million dollars in the market, that may boost the price up. So now really we've only got maybe eight million dollars worth of, of a new stock. So we went from having ten million bucks in, in a stock sold and bought, and now we only really owe technically when you when you look at how it all worked out, maybe an equivalent of eight million dollars worth of stock. And I'm not saying you're losing twenty percent. I guess you could, but there's some leakage there. So how is that a big deal? Well, the uh, the stuff I've been reading, and I can't remember, uh, I've read several different sources, but around 80%, the average turnover inside mutual funds is around 80%. So the higher your turnover rate, the more of this leakage you're going to have. And those are undisclosed fees. And that's because they don't have, they don't know what they're going to be that year, right? So it makes sense that they don't have to disclose it up front because they don't know it. But really, and what this guy found is when he was looking through the fine print in all of the prospectuses and all the, and the stuff, there's nowhere it talks about this. There's it, no, there's nowhere where it quantifies that. Uh, you know, it, at the end of the year, you know what it was. So as a mutual fund firm, they should be able to go back and tell us, here's how much we, you know, this is what the value happened. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've read through mutual fund statements and I can't figure out how much in fees they're costing. And if someone that knows what they're doing and they can't figure it out, that, that you know, that that makes it uh, diff very difficult for the for the average person. So these these prospectus uh, the documents that they talk about, he says they're not designed for the retail investor audience. That's why folks like and this is him talking like me with a job with deadlines, with an 11 year old daughter in school, with paint reeling on one side of the house, with a mother in law who needs special medical attention, with an annual car registration renewals, with holidays to celebrate, and functions to attend, who's never been to law school, who's never had any financial formal education, never read them. They don't read these prospectus. Um, and even he said, even though I read it, he goes, I couldn't see much in fees about uh, about them. Uh, he says, I'm sure there was a sentence or two buried in there about fees and commissions, always expressed as a percentage, but never as a hard dollar figure or as a subtraction from total return. So they're not even saying that they're pulling this from your total return. Okay. That doesn't sound accurate to me. Does that sound accurate to you? So uh, he goes on and saying that when he looked at his wife's stuff, he found even less information. Uh, he said the only part of her statement that related to cost was the average unit cost, cost basis column. But that has to do with the dividends and the capital gains distributions. It has nothing to do with any of the fees and commissions, if any, were, that were paid to her advisor. He says if any fees were paid to her advisor, they were not spelled out in the monthly statement. So retail investing amateurs, such as his wife and himself, have no reason to assume that she paid any fees on her advisor at le to her advisor, at least as far as the statement stuff goes. But you know that's not true because they're not working for free. And not I'm not saying they should work for free, but at least we should know what we're paying them, right? So uh, he says, so this week out of curiosity, I decided he would he, he decided he was going to run some fund comparisons uh, on the financial in, uh, industry regulation regulatory authority fund analyzer FINRA. So financial industry regulatory and authorities fund analyzer tool. Um, and he wanted to try to get an accessible and clear explanation of, of the cost. So he compared three funds. I'm not going to go into the names of the funds here just to protect myself from perhaps bashing them or, or since I'm not a licensed, um, I'm not a securities license. I can't, I can't talk specifically about a, a, a particular investment. Uh, so he, anyway, so he, what he did is that he had a $10,000 investment with a 5% return over a 10 year period would grow to $16,207 uh, in one, $13,443 in, in the second, and $13,164 in the third. And that's according to FINRA's expense analyzer. So total fees and sales charges were $64.28 for the first one, $2,234 for the second one, and $2,451 for the third one. Okay, that's what they're at. But now my question is, does that include that leakage? Because they don't know what it's going to be. They're predicting if it if it made a five percent return over the next ten years. It, but they're not talking about how much turnover there is inside of there because they don't know that yet, right? So that's to be fair, they can't predict it. But you also need to f kind of have an idea of what it's been. If they told you, hey, you know, over the last ten years, this is what it's been, it would be reasonable to to go ahead and expect that to. To potentially continue it would at least give you a ballpark number right 
and then you would find out if if they were if that turnover was actually generating better revenue better returns if it wasn't then you'd want to go with a lower turnover so basically since the inception of these funds uh, the annual returns were 5.33 percent 8.78 and 8.86 uh, but the annual operating expenses were 0.05 percent 1.92 percent and 2.13 percent so think about that those last two that doesn't include these I, I guess i call them hidden costs because they're not telling us about it but technically they're undis just undisclosed ones so, um all right so they get he gets a little bit more into the the department of labor says that uh, this this new it's a fiduciary rule they're trying to um, create it says uh, proponents of the industry of the, at the uh, Department of Labor hearings last month talked about the importance of disclosure but his wife's statements and the FINRA fund analyzer don't tell him anything about how much was paid to her advisor to the mutual funds uh, uh, or the mutual funds themselves and this is an age at an age where we're, we're talking about there's supposed to be more disclosure so he says here, what I want to know is how much in dollar terms of my wife's $75,000 IRA went to pay to her advisor and how much the funds paid him directly to select the funds that were chosen for two years ago. Okay, And you know, like I said, he's, I don't think he's worried about them getting paid. He just wants to know how much that is. Then he, it was, he was talking as he talked to his wife about this. And I think this is where a lot of the problem lies. And, I'm, and this is going to be putting it on you. So think about this. He goes, then my wife hit upon an essential truth which I suspect is close to how millions of other U.S. retail investors feel about the market. She has no inv interest in investing and deciding where her money should go. She just wants her retirement account to grow and to have the funds for, there for her one day without having to worry about it. Like much, of the, like much of entrepreneurial America, she's interested in running her small business, not in making retirement account investment decisions. And perhaps if her mutual fund statement told her how much in dollar terms she would have to pay for one fund over another and how much of that was going to her advisor, I have no doubt that she would be making different choices. And that's kind of the point, you know, if you've read anything I've had the last several weeks, I've done a lot of stuff on 401ks. I, I'm, I, I am anti-401k the way they're structured. And there's lots of reasons why I'm not going to go into all those. You can follow me. You can go back and follow me. You can uh, here, here on my Your Money Matters uh, video blog, or you can go uh, uh, to LinkedIn and find it. You can go to my website at MaxMyRetirementIncome.com and find out why we feel that, or I feel that way. I think I've got a lot of data, a lot of proof to back up why, and I've actually even found some other uh, uh, things that are better, and those are things that we talk about too. We don't go into much detail about them because we want to talk to you about those on a one-on-one -on -one basis or in a seminar type thing uh, where we're in front of a bunch of people because it's uh, it's a personal thing. It, what how impacts one person may not impact you because you don't you have different needs you have different things going on in your world so we individualize we personalize uh, each each of the plans that we put together so just hopefully you're following along and you're getting this uh and and you at least open your eyes to look at some alternatives because i'm telling you folks the 401k system is busted that includes the 403b 457 iras it's a i've, I've gotten to the point where i'm starting to call it a scam on the american people that's perpetrated by wall street the media and the government because okay, the government's in cahoots with Wall Street in, in all this deal. And the media, who has major advertisers in, in, in the Wall Street, uh, is, is in on it too. So just to keep these things in mind, uh, if, if you found this information interesting, dig in deeper to, to the stuff that we have here on the site. Uh, give me a call or email me. Let's, let's have a, a conversation about uh, how this might impact you. And if you found some value in this information, please share it with your friends, family, anyone you care about, coworkers, all those, anyone you really know that you think that might want to have a successful retirement. Because I'm afraid the way that we're, the path that we're going, the retirements for people aren't going to be very successful. So, thanks again for tuning in. My name again is Kurt Jackson with KJ Financial in Liberty, Missouri. My contact information will be up on the screen there for you. I encourage you to just give me a call. Let's have a conversation, right? I'm not a big high, I don't, I'm not a high pressure salesperson. If what we talk about interests you and you want to look into it further, then that's what we'll do. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you. Talk to you soon. Good luck.